Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make a car in Autodesk Fusion 360. So we're back, I took a week off from work and I thought it'd be nice to go somewhere. Uh, so that's what I did. Had a nice week off and now it's time to get back. So uh, a couple of updates. So the last video we did was a YouTube live and uh, there we did the the Wheel of Fate, or something along those lines I called it, I don't remember. Um, but that was a lot of fun, so what we essentially did was we put a few names of a few aircraft and vehicles and models that we'd like to make onto a spinning wheel, and then we, we spun the wheel live in front of everybody, and then um, it, it pointed towards uh, a very interesting uh, military aircraft, uh, the likes of which I'd never done before. So there were some interesting models uh, that were made in that video. So definitely go ahead and check those out because I had a lot of fun doing those and I really, really want to continue that series um, of spinning the wheel. Um, also, you might notice now you have a super thanks button under the video. And what that will allow you to do is it'll allow you to donate a little bit of an amount, whatever of your choice, to this channel to help support it. And with that money, I'm hoping to buy some better software so I can give you more quality videos. All right, that aside, let's get started back into this video. Okay. So um, what you'll notice is that in the previous video, we, uh, we ended with patching this one up or lofting, I think it was. And I said that either we can add a bit more personality to this car by um, cutting away some windows and therefore making it look more like a car. Um, but also at the same time, you may notice that there's a large missing gap over here. Now, what I want to do in this video is I want to actually tackle this area because I like to practice delayed gratification as much as I can. So um, what this will allow us to do is it might be a little bit more effort than the windows are, but what that will do is it'll make the car look more complete. And then uh, hopefully we can take it from there. And the method that I want to use in this video is patch. However, you'll notice that when we've used sweep and loft in the past, we've used them with sweeps and rails, right? Um, or path and guide rails, for example. But we've never done that with a patch yet. So in this video, I want to kind of go over how we can do that. And so what I would advise you to do now is pause the video, try this out yourself, and then come back and see how we did it. Try and use the patch tool along with an internal guided rail. Okay, hopefully you've tried it out and now we can go ahead and start this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top view and I'm going to start a new sketch. And now I'm going to click on the fit point spline. Again, ensuring that my 3D sketch is actually on, I'm going to click on fit point spline. And I'm going to attach one there and I'm going to attach one over there. Okay, you can go ahead and press the arrow there. And I just want to do a few small modifications. So I'm going to move the tangent so that it closely resembles the uh, window over there or the back panel. And again, from the side as well, I'm going to just going to push this up. And again, remembering that because we're dealing with tangent in two different planes and it's in 3D, that um, when you do it in certain two directions, it becomes independent of the other plane. So we've been through that a couple of times. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, and that's great, and that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish the sketch. Um, so what we want to do is we just want to now patch this up, really. So before we do the patch, let's make sure some of the lines are correct. So that one's good, that one's good, and you can already see that one is not good. Why? Because a patch requires a closed surface, right, or a closed loop. Uh, but over here, this is one single spline, so that's not going to cut it. So what we're going to have to do is remember that we had already created the sketch in a previous video. So we're going to take one of the, or we're going to copy one of the sketches and paste it into our current one. So if you go open the sketch panel uh, folder, sorry, and I don't want to hide that one. And I'm going to start switching these on one by one to try and locate where that one might be. Okay, so we found it. It's the one over here that's 116. So I'm going to click on that spline over there. I'm going to press Control C. And then in sketch 129, I'm going to press Control V. Okay. And that didn't quite work. That's because we're not actually 
in sketching mode. So I'm going to press edit sketch on my sketch 129 and I'm now going to press control V. Okay, so that's interesting. We copied a sketch from a previous, uh, we copied a spline from a previous sketch, but you can see it's actually located it in a wrong plane. And the reason why this is possibly happening is because we have created our sketch from the top plane, whereas most probably this sketch was made from the side plane. So that's not going to work. So what we'll do is we'll create another sketch from the side view, and then we'll paste this one, this spline, into that. Okay, so I'm going to press cancel. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to hide all of these because we don't need them anymore. And I'm going to finish the sketch. Right, so we can leave that one there as it is that we did from the top view. Not a problem whatsoever. Let's create a new sketch now. Oops, I was wrong. Let's create a new sketch now on the side plane. And now when I try and paste this, hopefully fingers crossed, this is going to come up properly. So I'm going to press Control V, and there we have it. So that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and press OK on the move and copy. So that's brought a spline in from the previous sketch. Again, we've done this a couple of times already, so I'm just sort of breezing through it. Um, and obviously, this is still a single spline. So we need something to actually split it so we access the point from there to there, right? And if you remember in a previous video, we've actually created this spline over here. So let's try and bring one of those back. Yeah, so for me, that is sketch 128. And what I can do is I can take this spline and I can copy it. And again, in sketch 130, which we have made on the side plane as well, I'm going to control V. And you can see that that's now come up as its own sketch. Cool, our own spline. So I'm going to hide the previous two. And now you can see that in our current sketch, current two sketches, we have the complete loop that we might need. So I'm going to break this spline. So I'm going to do modify break and you can see it's already broken it automatically because it saw that there's an intersection there. So now this part of the spline we don't need anymore. And this one, you can see it's actually extending a little bit to the right. And if you remember correctly, the reason why it's doing that is because in a previous video, we had sort of extruded or uh, swept a path all the way back till there. Okay. Now... Now what we can do is we can actually move this um, back a little bit, okay, just for the time being, just temporarily. And what we can do is we can try and coincide this point to the point over there. So let's try doing that. Coincide that one to that one. Okay, fantastic. So that's awesome. Now, if that didn't work for you, uh, that's possibly because it couldn't find a point on the intersection of these two um, surfaces. So you can just create a point, um, point there, on that, uh, on in the intersection of the two sketches, uh, sorry, the two surfaces, and then you can coincide this spline to coincide with that new point that you would have just created. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and print it, uh, press finish sketch, and I'm going to try patching this now. And this is where things get interesting. So make sure enable chaining is off. I'm going to press one, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. Okay. I almost thought that didn't work. Okay. So that's awesome. Now what you'll notice carefully is there's a little dent and you can see how the light is reflecting off the surface. You can see that the surface is kind of going inwards. It dips like a pinch before it comes back. So obviously that's not very nice. And the reason why it's doing that is because of that point there. So the way we can do this is uh, adding an internal rail, right? So we can do this by going back into our sketch 130. So we'll just right click and edit sketch. And we'll also bring back 20, 129 where one of the splines is. And I'm going to create a spline between that point, oops, between that point there and that point there, just to approximate to start with. I'm going to go to the back view and then Press M on the keyboard and do that. I'm going to go ahead and press OK and finish sketch. OK, and now if I go to the loft, oh, sorry, the patch we did, so edit feature. And now over here, you can see that there's an option called interior rails points. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to select the spline. And then we're going to go ahead and press OK. So 
So um, I think that's a rendering issue there. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, that looked like a rendering issue. Okay, so that's cool. Um, and now what we can do, actually, let me edit this spline a little bit more. You can see that's probably because of the way this one is here. So I'm going to move this a little bit in that direction just to add a bit of a curvature. And then I'm going to move this one so that it follows at least a bit of curvature as well. Go ahead and press finish sketch. And there we have it. Cool. Um, so I guess we can do one more thing before we go. And that is to create this surface over here. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new sketch from the top and fit point spline. And I'm going to latch onto that point there. Maybe till there. Again, making sure before we do anything else, making sure that it's in its correct spot in 3D space. So press M on the keyboard, go up, press enter. There we have it. And I'm just going to add a little bit of curvature uh, from this side. So I know these videos are getting a bit more casual than um, a slow, really thought out step by step process. And the reason is because you've seen that um, I think I think that's important when we're going through the basics. But now that we've pretty much covered the basics in the first five videos, this is now an opportunity to sort of finish the car together, but really go through it in a real life uh, scenario, where we do troubleshooting live. And I say this again and again, because I'm a firm believer of um, facing problems, looking at them and solving them, um, instead of speculating what might be the case. And then we run into a problem we've not seen before, and then it gets embarrassing. I don't like that. I like to be very open when problems occur, and then we solve them together. I think it's quite fun. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and now do that to that. You go ahead and press OK, and then finish sketch. So we'll patch one, two, three, four, and there we go. So that's cool. And now, just for a bit of fun, what I'd like to do is I'd also like to um, bring back these bodies that we had hidden initially. So actually, before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and press Save. Um, so if I bring back one and seven, so show and hide, yep. And also these ones, show hide. And I'm doing it in this way because um, it'll allow me to undo easily. So show hide, there we go. Okay, great, look at that. That's really starting to come together. Uh, so if I go into perspective mode, it'll look even better. So look at that. That looks very, very cool. Nice. So well done, guys. If you've reached this far, I'm just going to undo, make sure I'm not getting into any trouble. Okay. So well done if you've reached this far, guys. It's, it's, it's really starting to come together, which is really cool. Uh, go back to orthographic. And what we want to do in the next video is we want to tackle the top area. That's pretty much all that is left in terms of the outer structure of the car. And then maybe we can look at detailing it in another video. And then also, of course, adding the headlights. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And uh, I'm going to try and plan another live soon. And we're going to use the uh, spinning wheel again as a, as a, as a fun little tool. Um, the Patreon project. So we've got a few more Patreon subscribers. Thank you very much for joining. And the names will pop up on the screen now. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. And uh, 15th of September is potentially the first uh, Patreon project that I would like to do. I was planning for it to be in August. However, nobody had joined, so I really couldn't go ahead with it. But now we have three. So very kind of you. Thank you very much. Uh, please do consider joining the Patreon. We're going to have a lot of fun. And uh, if that's not something that you're looking for, you can even... Um, you can use the super thanks button to pay a small donation if you like supporting this channel. And thank you so much, guys. Have a great week, and I'll see you very soon. Take care.